and uh, make serotonin. Oh boy, a good B complex or a good multiple high uh, in uh, bees. Uh, there is a chemical in the naturopathic arena, arena uh, conversion called BH4 that we know when we're deficient in, um, we get depressed. And so if we can use the bees to help, if you are taking medications, the bees help the medications work better. So hopefully you can use a little lower dosage. Uh, or if you're not taking it, it will help with your depression in conjunction with other types of supplementation and lifestyle changes on the diet. Um, good quality multiple vitamin with calcium and magnesium. Calcium and magnesium helps things relax, helps vaso relax the blood vessels so you can get better blood flow moving. This requires a lot of blood in order to work and if you don't have good circulation to the brain, it ain't going to happen. Uh, cleansing the body of toxins. There are different, uh, I've got, a, I know at my store and there are other places, good whole body cleanses that bottom line will detox the colon, clean out the bowel, get the liver moving, get all the organs moving, clean the blood. And I, I gotta tell you, nine times out of 10, my customers come in that do tell me, tell me they feel so significantly better in their brain, in their depression, in their mood. So cleansing and detoxing the body, and there's juicing that you can do to do with that as well. Different formulas, you can go online to help with that. There are also various uh, Bach flower essence remedies that work with emotional issues. Uh, most good health food stores have these Bach flower essences and you can look up your various symptoms and maybe try a few of those. Now there are some tests uh, that I'd like to review with that you can discuss with your doctor if you have chronic depression that I'd like you to keep in mind. Testing for yeast, food, and chemical allergies. I have a website on here that your physician can use in order to uh, order these types of tests for you. You can send them off to this company and uh, find out what you're allergic to as far as foods, chemicals, uh, and environmental uh, allergens. Hormone testing, vitamin mineral analysis, anemia can contribute to depression. Toxic metals we discussed earlier, amino acid analysis, and blood sugar analysis. All these should be uh, viewed upon as potential for your physician to uh, test you for and see whether or not these may be a contributing factor to depression. All these kinds of things, if at all possible, before you try on the meds. They're very difficult. They take a while for them, the meds to work and it takes a long time to get off of them if you do go on them. So anyway, we're gonna be moving on to our next segment, which is our fitness portion. the fitness portion of our show and today I'm going to show you an exercise that was actually recently on the Montel show uh, Montel's got a terrific doctor by the name of Dr. Schwartz who uh, this is to get the blood flowing and circulating and instead of using caffeine can give you about 30 minutes worth of energy first we start with just some light weights or no weight at all one or two pounders I didn't have those at home I've got the five pounders a little heavy but I'm going to show you these four different exercises that you can do you do 15 and we want to do them nice and quick and if you have any types of elbow injuries or bicep injuries um, this is not a recommended exercise for you um, be aware obviously before you start a fitness program you want to consult your doctor or healthcare professional so 15 here and then we switch over and we're going to kick back like this and we're just going to do those nice and quick and fast trying to get circulation going into the triceps okay just a quick 15 reps on that one okay then overhead we're going to reach above to the sky and you're just going to do quick real quick right here 15 reps keeping the heart moving and you're breathing hopefully you're still breathing <laughs> if you're that out of shape then you need more practice that's just all there's to it Okay, and the last one, we're going to swing. And I don't know how good this is going to work with my microphone, so I'm going to kind of do this a little slower. But you're going to twist around. Mind you, if you have any back injuries, you know, bruised um, ribs or anything like that, this is probably not an exercise for you. But you can do it slower or faster, depending on your pace, getting the circulation moving again in the body. 
15 reps on each side. So what we'd like you to do then, give that a try, see if that can't take the place of maybe that burst of uh, caffeine in the afternoon for some additional amount of energy. Next, we're going to be moving on to our research analyst for the latest, greatest info. Welcome to the research portion of our show, and with us today is research analyst Ralph Turciano. Thank you. What if I told you you could take a drug, medicine, nutritional supplement, or anything for that matter that could reduce your risk of disability down by 41%? Well, you can. It's available to you on a daily basis. It's something simple just called walking. Out of the Journal of Geriatric Physical Therapy, they found out that those that walk just 40 minutes a day reduce their risk of disability down by a total, as I said before, 41%. And this was just over a four-month period of time. Now, they had a control group, which was interesting. The control group that did nothing for four months literally saw a decline of 9% in their aerobic capacity, part of their ability to breathe, while that walking group increased their aerobic capacity by 19%. It doesn't take a little to do a lot. It doesn't have to come out of a pill. This is a simple fix that anyone can do. Just 40 minutes. Now, on to our food. Now, sometimes you think because people manufacture food for children, that children, by some odd chance, may be end up eating a little healthier. If they make health-related claims, and this food is good for your child, you'd believe, you'd believe so. Well, they discovered that 89% of the food manufactured for children, and this is excluding soda, bakery goods, and candies. These are not part of the picture. 89% of the food manufactured from children had virtually no nutritional value whatsoever and was loaded with sugar. Now here's the criminal part. Of that 89%, 62% of those foods made claims that they were healthy for your children. When in reality, there was no health benefit whatsoever. And of all, of all the food they researched manufactured for children, only 11%. And this came out of the journal, the July issue of the UK-based Journal of Obesity Review. So when you think about these companies manufacturing food for your kids, don't think that they have the best interest of your child in mind. It's the bottom line of the dollar on this one. If they can get them to eat it regardless of what it's made of, they'll do it. Now, back to this. Let's say, for example, what would you do or what would you think if you can choose the sex of your child? Boy, girl, maybe both? At the same time, well, through the miracle of PCBs, what I call polychlorinated chlorinated biophenol, biphenols, they discovered this. For every milligram or microgram of PCB found in the blood of women, it reduced the chance of having a boy down by 7%. The maximum levels they discovered in children, and this was done through the San Francisco Bay Area by the, environment, the Journal of Environmental Health, uh, Biomed Central Journal of Environmental Health, they found that uh, basically the woman with the highest levels of PCBs had a 33% less likelihood of having a male child. Mm -hmm. That just to give you an idea of how powerful an environmental toxin is. That's still around to this day, even though it was banned in the 70s. And they did this on children, uh, mothers who were basically born in the 50s and 60s themselves. Again, very intriguing. Now, here's a little twist. There used to be a bacteria which was found virtually universally in everyone that was born for the past 50,000 years, which is very important. Now keep that in mind because they were trying to figure out why asthma rates were beginning to skyrocket within the past few decades. Well, Heliopactor pylori, they discovered, reduced the risk of children having asthma by up to 59%. And in teens who had Heliopactic pylori, their chance of having asthma are 25% likely. Also, 40% less likely to have hay fever, allergies, eczema, or rash. This was done at the New York University Medical Center Research. And on top of that, they noticed that basically that today, as of, well, I should say of 1990, when it was almost universal among all children to have Heliopactic pylori in their guts, only 5.4% of children 
of Bavaria at the age of three had any H. pylori remaining. Now, H. pylori is always known as a bacteria that causes ulcers, but as a child, those acids can be kind of weak, and as an adult, balance becomes to come into play. So that's something real interesting. In fact, this is how they said it worked. Our hypothesis is that if you have heliopactic bacteria, you have a greater population of what's called regulatory T cells that are setting higher thresholds for sensitization, Dr. Blazer explained. For example, if a child does not have heliobacter and has contact with two or three cockroaches, sounds gross, he may get sensitized to them. But if Heliobacter is directing the immune response, that even if a child comes into contact with many of these bugs, he may not get sensitized because the immune system is more tolerant to that. And you have to remember, as little as two generations ago, it was at least 70% in all children. Now it's down to 5.4%. And now here's a little vindication for the old low-carb diets that we spent so much time trying to crucify, so to say. They discovered with low-carb diets and cholesterol compared to Mediterranean diets and the popular low-fat diets, the best results were with low-carb diets which were unrestricted in the amount of fats that were, that were taken in. This is real interesting because the American Heart Association for the longest period of time has been saying it does not work. They found out that the low-carb diets, or I should say high-fat, low-carb diets, resulted in better ratios of HDL to LDL than any other diet that was out there. And this diet lasted two years and they had an 85% adherence rate to the diet. In fact, many of them still fall into this diet today. This research you can find in the New England Journal of Medicine. And they found it to be one of the most credible research studies that were out there. And also at the same time too, you're going, well, they must have ate other things while they were on this diet. Nope. This was an isolated nuclear research facility in Israel, which they followed them for at least two years. And basically they found out, without a doubt, including weight loss, that people on the low carbohydrate diets lost 10.3 pounds after on average, where basically the low fat diets only lost six and a half pounds total. They found it incredibly amazing. But yet, the American Heart Association responded by calling it null and void, not paying attention to the facts, not paying attention to the science. Well, there's propaganda in the science, and maybe it's all that margarine that's still clouding their thought after all these years. Oh, that was a big one or two. Well, thank you very much. And that's it for this research section. Um, once again, we hope that our show encourages you to do your further research and, and think really about your diet, what you're doing with your lifestyle. Really, really, really important that you take a peek at all of these factors and then read the research for yourself. Go on websites and get information. Take your health into your own hands. Thank you very much for joining our show. Bye.